Hi, I'm Roy with Rugged Video, and I'd like to show you the unpacking as well as bench testing of the RVS4 Flight Tour video system. Like all our systems, this comes with a complete documentation packet, which includes the installation, operation, technical supplement, as well as a quick reference guide. In addition to that, you also have a complete wiring diagram for your unique system, as well as a packing list. Let's get started. Just got done unpacking the system, and we have a lot of components. So to sort through it, you're going to need your packing list. This is included with every system and includes every single item that should be included in the box. We checked it before the system went out, and now it's your turn. So you go through item by item, make sure everything that was supposed to be included was included in the package. Just in case something's missing, you can go ahead and let us know. We make sure to get that out to you. Now we're going to follow the wiring diagram that was included in the documentation. Once everything's connected, we'll go ahead and follow the bench test, which is found in the technical supplement. A few pages back. Let's get started. The system here has four cameras, two of our HD29 interior cameras, as well as a couple of bullet cameras. Those can be mounted outside the aircraft. We have all the extension cables we need, a benchtop power supply, all the accessories we need, as well as a cable to connect it to aircraft power, which we're not going to use now for the bench test. So to start out, we'll just go ahead and power the system from the wall power supply. The nice thing about it is everything's powered with one single power connection. This unit right here regulates power and sends it to the cameras as well as any accessories that need power. Go ahead and plug in media. Now you'll notice on the front there's an SD and a USB position. We'll just slip it to SD for convenience. Sorry, USB. And we're going to go ahead and connect our cameras. All our cameras use the Tefsil cabling, which you'll see here, as well as an RG179 cable using BNC connectors for the HD video. All the connectors are twist lock, connect right in the back of the unit, and everything's well labeled. Now the HD29 cameras have a black connector in the back that you can plug in and you use to twist lock. You can tighten those with your thumb or you can use a flathead screwdriver. Use a flathead, just be sure not to tighten them too tight, otherwise you can break the screws. Make sure we have a solid connection. So with those connected, both of these cameras are getting power from the system. Now we have to connect up the video so we can transmit the HD video to the recorder. those cameras are connected. Now we're going to connect up our bullet cameras. Same way with the HD29s, these have a separate cable for power as well as the HD video. A little bit different about these cameras, they have a pigtail. And then on that pigtail you're going to find three connectors. On this one you have the silver connector which is for power, the yellow connector for HD video, and then a white connector which can be used for optional settings. There's also a control knob on this unit so you can access the on-screen menu for the camera and change the individual camera settings. Let's go ahead and plug these in.
Now you'll notice systems as complex as the S4 with four cameras um, have a lot of different connections and components. That's why the bench test is so important because you get familiar with all the components and every part of the system before you're actually installing it inside the helicopter. So we got all our cameras connected. Now we're just going to check and make sure that all of them have a valid video signal. So you see here, you have a, uh, a blue GPS light. There's a red fault light, which isn't lit up, a record light, and a standby light. The GPS is blinking, meaning we don't have a GPS signal. We'll plug in the GPS in a little bit. The important thing is that there's no fault light. That means that we have valid media as well as valid video. So go ahead and switch through the cameras. We'll do this manually right on the front. Uh, from camera one to camera two, still no fault light, so we have valid video. Camera three has valid video, and so does camera four. So we're off to a good start. Now we have a few of the accessories. Here we have our commander controller, which automates the switching and recording process. We'll get to that in a little bit. We have a record stop start switch, which gives a pilot manual control over the system without being near the unit. The GPS that I mentioned earlier, as well as an audio cable. So we went ahead and plugged in our record switch and you may notice that the record lights are blinking. That means that the record switch is in the on position. Go ahead and turn that off. What's nice about the record switch is you do have that LED indicator right on the switch so the pilot can see that even if the unit is mounted remotely. Next we'll plug in the GPS. Now the GPS just plugs into the back. This is an antenna receiver. Um, you'll notice that the blue light is going to keep blinking even though I plugged in the GPS. That's one of the settings on the unit and that's because this unit is set up for the commander controller. You can actually go in and change the GPS setting to a different baud rate, um, which would allow the antenna to be plugged in directly. But we'll use the GPS on the commander in a little bit. Now that configurable baud rate allows you to plug in a lot of different GPSs, not just our antenna receivers that we include with the system. So you can plug that into a Garmin 696. Pretty much any aviation grade Garmin has a RS-232 output that will plug into the system. For more information, just contact us. We'll let you know what the settings need to be. Now we have our audio cable. Unfortunately, we have no way to test that on the bench here. Uh, if you do have a way to test it in your shop, great. You can go ahead and plug that in. Make sure you have audio. This cable in particular is a helicopter headset pass-through. So we have the standard helicopter single plug, which is called a U174 connector. Um, plug this into the audio panel. Plug your headset in the other end. And then we have one of our silver connectors on this end that can plug into the system itself. And that is the setup for the base RVS-4 with four cameras. On the next segment, we'll go into plugging in the commander. Now we're going to plug in the commander. Um, the commander controller is based on GPS. So we have a, a GPS input here that we'll go ahead and connect. Standard antenna receiver. Um, we include a system or an antenna with a package. You can include any GPS um, you want. That'll plug right in. And based on GPS, what this system does is control audio. It can play soundtracks, narrations on the video. It can overlay text, control the recording, when you're recording, when you're not, um, camera switching, as well as take snapshots. Basically automates the entire video capture process to create an edited video while in flight without any control or input by the pilot. Good thing about this is the pilot still has control over the system if they want. They can choose exactly what camera they want, when they're recording, they can also trigger snapshots. Go ahead and plug this in. Here we're going to plug in the audio portion. That's just a straight pass-through cable between the commander controller and the unit itself. Uh, you may have noticed there I switched plugs. The good thing about the system is you can switch cables. There's no polarity. Um, they just go in uh, either direction. So there we plugged in our audio. This will control our camera switching. And lastly, we have the multi-link. This is where the commander controller is going to get its power from. Let's 
going to send its GPS data and control the system. Go ahead and plug this in. All right. So there's a green light on the unit. You'll notice it, it was blinking slow for a second. It was acquiring a GPS signal. If it's blinking fast, it means that the SD card isn't loaded. The SD card is going to contain all the files you need that configures the GPS path and how it's going to be automated. You'll notice you have a couple knobs here. One is to control the audio for the unit itself. That's your soundtracks and narrations. The other is for your external input. So it mixes these two signals. Here we have a headset cable which you can plug in. And that'll mix headset audio along with those pre-recorded narrations and soundtracks. So the system's all set and then you should notice the system is switching between cameras. This one is configured on a five second timer as a default. Based on GPS, you can set different waypoints in different areas that you want to record, let's say between three cameras or two cameras or all four. Um, that's configurable throughout the entire flight. Uh, it also uses directions. So let's say you're flying a coastal tour. As you're flying up the coast, it might only get the left cameras. When you're flying down the coast, it may only get the right. And that's something you can set up in the system. As I said before, this can also control recording. The system is not set up to record, but you'll also notice here this blue light. As I mentioned before, the GPS was actually configured for the commander controller, and we see that it is getting valid GPS data from the commander. What's nice about this is the unit can still use that GPS data. If you did want to overlay things like heading, speed, coordinates on the video, you can still do that here. You're not losing the GPS data. So for more information on the system, feel free to contact a sales rep. You can email us online or give us a call. Thank you.